Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, our guest is Janie and Kyle Dooland. How about you guys tell us a little bit about yourself? So, uh, hi everyone. I'm Kyle and this beautiful creature beside me is Janie. (laughs) Um, We've been investing in the U.S. for uh, just about a handful of years now. Yeah. And uh, we invested originally in uh, Cleveland and its suburbs for the tremendous opportunities. Um, We were scoping the market. It took us a year uh, of research and due diligence across the U.S. When we decided that we were going to invest in U.S. real estate, it was, okay, now where do we do it? So we took a year before buying that first property, and it ended up being a suburb of Cleveland. Uh, that first property was just an amazing deal. We couldn't turn it down at $9,000 cash is what we purchased that property for a single family home 1800 square feet three bedrooms or one and a half bath put in a little love in and cash into it and with another thirty thousand and when we were done three months later that property was appraised for seventy thousand so effectively doubling our money in, in a couple of months that's part from that's there awesome. bird and bird and bird and grew uh from there <laughs> so if you don't mind me asking where like where did you find that deal was that uh was that just on the realtor.com or was there a secret way of finding a nine thousand dollar property <laughs> <laughs> yeah back then that particular property was um scouted by a contractor uh that we had fostered a relationship with so uh it was basically uh, a wholesale but he uh it was understood at that time that we were going to do many deals with them so uh, he was just, you know, lining up the deals for us to go see, and off we went. That was a particular deal. It was nine thousand. It was actually that property, actually was purchased from a tax sale by a wholesaler for five thousand dollars. We only figured that out at sale, and then he t- they tacked on their four thousand dollar wholesale fee on top. We were glad to pay the nine thousand. I was going to say that's still I wouldn't I don't have no problem paying that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> as long exactly. as you got a clean title, I just literally today closed a property that was a tax deed as well, and we had to go through some things and make sure that there was a proper quick claim deed done, and it, it made things very muddy. So I know just one of those things to watch out for if you're buying something that is a tax deed that the other person has actually closed on it properly and then went back and done their thing or or waited the period right because there's a, uh, there's it's it's yep. state to state specific but there's a period for tax deeds that before they just become full deeds but if you mm-hmm. jump the gun on that then you're going to have to do the extra steps sorry i'm just cutting you off <laughs> absolutely no it's great right. for yeah. everyone listening absolutely and so the the story goes that uh, that single family home that first property allowed us to get into the game at relatively low costs and from there we just burned into a second into a third and as the years went forward and as our confidence grew and our teams grew, then we transitioned over to small plexes and now into larger plexes and mobile home parks. So in the U.S., we've, uh, yeah, we've come a long way. We've had a lot of <laughs> built a lot of, <laughs> that's basically where we're at right now. That's awesome. So you said off the start that it took a, a year of due diligence. What were you, that, I guess I was determining the market or what, what were you doing for that year? Like what were you, kind of things were you checking for? Mm-hmm. One of the main criteria, I mean, we're, we're Canadian, right? Um, <laughs> and so the, why even invest in the U.S. first and foremost is because the returns and the, the flexibility in the market is so much greater than in Canada. And so if we were going to jump the border, uh, might as well get the biggest bang for our buck. Right. So one of our criteria was obviously the return on, on capital. Uh, Your ROI, your cash on cash return, your IRR, however you want to call it. That was definitely um, one of the biggest criteria. And so it happened that uh, we were placing offers all over the place in Florida and Texas and Cleveland, all over. And uh, at one particular moment in time, uh, and when we got started, we were looking to wholesale. So we had uh, at that time, I think we had four properties under contract in Cleveland at that one given time. And we were, you know, doing our due diligence remotely and we, we had learned from a, a real estate investor, a Canadian investor investing in the U.S. We learned how to do that remotely. Yeah. And um, so we had these four properties on a contract and it just so happened that there was a real estate training happening in Cleveland. So we were there anyway. So yeah. how, about we, how about we go take a look at these properties we have under contract? Yeah. And uh, how did that go? Well, 
we uh, so four properties under contract and we didn't know much about the area so basically we followed Trulia and we looked at the areas on Trulia to see if they were good or not uh, they were okay on Trulia uh, back then it was the green now I think it's blue but uh, back then it was light green so not not too bad not too bad yeah but um, sure enough we meet with a few owners and I mean Cleveland a couple years ago five years ago was a pretty bad place inner city Cleveland yeah. it cleaned up pretty nicely now but five years ago it was pretty bad so I mean we walk into a neighborhood where every other house is foreclosed on um, there's gunshot wound and wounds yeah <laughs> <laughs> the house is bleeding that's all bad <laughs> gunshot windows and yeah just, um, it, was, it, it was quite the quite the scene um, and when we went to meet the owners I mean, we had these properties for not much under contract. I mean, under $20,000. One of them, uh, a triplex, was, uh, I think we had it under contract for about $10,000. And I mean, this thing needed at least 100,000 worth of work. But the owner who's just right there in front of us is telling us how it just needs about ten or $15,000. That's almost. common, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no copper, there's no, there, there's nothing. Yeah. Like, no. Anyway, so we, we went around and it was uh, quite interesting uh, finding out that Trulia is good, but it's street by street. And then there's an area in Cleveland, it's, it's the city of East Cleveland, which is a city of itself. Well, Trulia doesn't really, well, they don't report. They don't report crime in that suburb of Cleveland. There's okay. just too much of it. Oh. And this is not doing very well uh, financial wise. It's, um, it's on the verge of bankruptcy if it's not in bankruptcy. So so they just don't report the crime. But on paper, it just looks like it's a fantastic neighborhood. It's all <laughs> green or light blue, and um, it's beautiful. Uh -huh. um, no, it's, it's a really, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. So as a foreign investor, not knowing and doing it remotely, uh, we were trying to wholesale these places like our mentor had taught us. But unfortunately, we were wholesaling places that were, you know, really bad areas and we didn't know about it. And we're telling another remote investor, oh yeah, I mean, uh, the owner tell, you know, it's, he's telling us that it's okay, that there's about $15,000 worth of work. Trulia looks great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, then, so then we said, okay, well, uh, we'll have to do a little bit more due diligence then um, yeah. before putting on the contract. <laughs> yeah that's interesting like i i you know, i use a whole bunch of different apps for uh, mm -hmm. looking at neighborhoods i never knew that it truly even did that so yeah. it's a super quick high level fast like where do you is it just like a tab you drop down on the on the map that does the on truly i've just never used trulia for that yeah yeah, yeah on trulia basically uh, when you get to the map section you'll see on the top there's uh like one i think there's six or seven different ways you can filter the information and one is by crime okay so when you click on that then it becomes like a heat map of crime the darker now it's dark blue the darker the blue the more crime there is there's a lighter the blue or when you get the gray then it's no crime or virtually no crime mm -hmm. okay so it does crime does it do like appreciation what other metrics does it do yeah a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of everything okay uh, yeah the, the, the property value it's uh uh, comps yeah a little uh, bit of comps the taxes a little bit of everything so we also yeah. take a, a bit of information from a few different sites but that was the first one that we you know used back then <clears throat> no, that's cool i'm gonna check it out i, I just I, 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 I love as much information as i can possibly get if i can even layer that with some of the apps <laughs> i use i'm like oh, maybe maybe mm -hmm. i'll get a second opinion or i'll see some something one app will see something that the other one doesn't see <laughs> exactly exactly and uh uh, word to the wise and you just said it there it's an opinion like every other app so for anybody listening it's not this one thing that's the go-to for everything but it's one additional opinion in the marketplace to factor into your to your equation when you're weighing weighing a decision to buy or sell or wholesale a property yeah mm -hmm. no, exactly and you, you even if you just go and check trulia versus zillow versus redfin versus all of them they'll all have a different price and sometimes they're vastly different yep. so mm -hmm. like and that's just uh an approximate that I wouldn't use that as like the bread and butter for your deal because otherwise you're going to get shocked <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I like to get a realtor to pull comps for me. So I have, uh, I have a, a couple in my back pocket that are very good at, uh, you know, they'll, they'll make their money from me in a different way. And so they, mm -hmm. they'll do mm -hmm. stuff for me. Um, 
you mentioned off the start, maybe we, I don't know if I cut off it was if the story, but you said Cleveland, uh, you went for Cleveland. Is everything you do in Cleveland or because you said off the start, you were looking at Florida, Texas, all over the place, or do you just, did you just pinpoint right into Cleveland? Is that the focus? Mm -hmm. So when we got started, um, we had very limited capital. Yeah. Uh, and so Cleveland price point was right where we needed to be right to out, out of the, yeah. out of the, but we made it work and we grew and we grew and we grew. And when we, crossed over to the multifamily space, um, apartment buildings and mobile home parks, those are larger assets. From that point on, we kind of put our single families and our residential search aside to only focus on the largers. Yep. Because now there's more, um, there's more things involved and that asset can self-support a new market to develop a new market and a new team in that market. Yep. For example, if we buy a mobile home park, a 50 lot mobile home park in Michigan, well, it's worth finding a new manager or you know, building the team there because that that asset generates probably about a hundred thousand gross or more a year. So that's worth the effort rather than having one single family in Texas, one single family in Florida. And you need a team gotcha. on yeah. you now every property that you own. So that's that. So for a moment, we were only focusing on larger assets, and every time we bought one, we'd build a team there. But as we continued on, um, I'm actually, uh, my professional background is I, I was a, a teacher. I was a mathematics professor. I taught from elementary school all the way to university. And Janie uh, is and was, well, was and is still uh, very, very part-time, a registered nurse with a specialization in northern care. So you think Canada's north? No, there's a northern portion of Canada <laughs> for those in, in the U.S. <laughs> outpost, outpost nursing. Yeah, it's in the Arctic. That's where I work. Once <laughs> <laughs> and so um, both of our roles are very giving um, we have very giving professions and we both love to teach and to you know to yep. to share our knowledge and share just share in general and so that teaching element always kept coming back you know uh, we were doing meetups uh, we were guest speaking at different REI groups it just kept coming back and so many people were asking us well can you can you help us can you teach us can you do this can you do that and I mean, yes, we can, but then we have to weigh our time versus, you know, the, the, the return on that time. Yeah. And so um, we decided to put one and one together. One was all of these, all of this work on the residential real estate that we had uh, had done, all the groundwork in Cleveland, and all these people who wanted to learn and single families and small residential, just, it's just a good place to start learning. If you're a Canadian wanting to invest in the U.S., probably best for most people to start with a residential, uh, a single family home yeah. rather than a 50 unit mobile home park. So what we've done is now we have all those deals, all those deal flow, all that deal flow. And now we have these partners that we guide and we help build their U S business. And we just put the one to one together. So we're still involved in residential, but we don't buy them ourselves. Our partners yeah. by proxy of us buy residential properties. So we've kind of transitioned into the into a, a, a coaching or guiding or consulting role when it comes to residential real estate. Cool. Yeah. Just th just thinking of that, like because I um, whenever I'm trying to do a JV or anything with that, people start bringing trying to bring me deals, um, and I have an issue financing or refinancing properties that are too cheap. Um, which, cause I'm, I'm in markets that are having similar price points to Cleveland. And, right. <laughs> um, do you guys have that issue? Like, what do you, do you have financing problems for cash out refis for purchases for anyway, what, what's your financing situation? <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the cards out on the table. Let's put the cards on the table. So, um, financing is a big hurdle when it comes to low value properties, anything under 50,000. Um, we do have connections for, for finance lenders, but the terms are horrible. We're almost talking credit card rates. Yeah. So you don't want that even if you can, yeah. um, which is why even for our single families, we're targeting properties whose valuation after rehab is a hundred thousand plus. And just to back up a little bit, yeah. when we had those first four properties under contract, three of those were, uh, it was a two duplex, uh, two triplexes and one duplex for $60,000. Yeah. And as we were doing due diligence, uh, we called a lot, a lot of lenders. I mean, we spent three months, literally three months on the phone with, I mean, over 500 lenders yep. to, to see if they could finance us. Because we, at that time, I mean, we, we could stretch the $60,000, but then the problem was our money is going to be tied. It's going to be tied for a long time because there was no way that any of these lenders were going to be able to cash us out. So that's when we decided to switch 
our strategy and really look at the suburbs of Cleveland. At that time, we could we were able to get a refinance of um, the, the the property. The property valuation had to be worth at least seventy thousand, um, and we were getting sixty five to seventy percent loan to value. Today, yeah. uh, it's a hundred thousand. Most lenders want to see a hundred thousand valuation, and they still give about sixty five percent to seventy percent loan to value. So back then, seventy percent we had to go in the outskirts of Cleveland. So that's when we actually started to. Uh, to invest. So we let go of the two triplexes and the duplex and said, well, you know, they're, they're great cash flows. They were 50% cash on cash returns, but we wanted to grow. So we decided to just put those aside, start single family homes in the outskirts. And uh, we found that the first property was worth 70,000 mm-hmm. um, and then went from there. So we basically just pretty much invested on the outskirts. Gotcha. So then when you're buying the original ones, if they're under the 75 or 70,000 or whatever it was, 75,000, are you used, using hard money or just cash? Like, under 70,000, uh, we haven't bought that many. We no. bought a, okay. like a triplexes that are cash and they're great cash on cash returns. Yep. Uh, but our money is pretty much stuck. Yep. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, all over 100,000 now. They all have to be worth 100,000 mm-hmm. or else we just don't buy them. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's good to, to touch base and, and for the longest time i would ask that question to everyone i'd speak to as well because it's it's the it's the um oh what's that expression holy grail? it's the holy grail <laughs> uh right if you can find someone with decent terms on financing for properties worth fifty thousand, there are some markets like like you're in and like cleveland and, yeah. and some areas of detroit that you know you just <laughs> You can buy up streets at a time, and and cash flow like like no tomorrow. Oh, yeah, no, it's incredible. Some of the some mm-hmm. of the, some of the price, like the one we just closed today, was uh, forty two for a duplex. That's I don't know. I think it ca- rents for almost thirteen hundred dollars a month, and you think it's crazy, right? Like it's they're just good numbers. But anyway, um, uh-huh. yeah, I, I don't. I found some. I found some crazy low lenders, but it's still then your terms keep getting worse and worse as you yeah. as, as you get down there. But so what uh, we do instead is the Burr model or the fix and flip model, where we'll buy a property worth about thirty thousand, we'll put in about thirty, and it's worth about a hundred, so we'll cash out our money and then move on. Yeah, that's where I am now. I'm trying to roll money every time, especially if I'm using joint ventures, and if we can't. Uh, cash out, refinance, and get their money back. A lot of times, I'll be just like, suggest maybe we should just flip it because mm-hmm. that way, you know, you're not, you're not money's not tied up in this thing forever. So, yeah. Exactly. If people wanted to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do so? A few ways. Uh, we're quite active on Facebook, so yep. it's JKS dot Adventure. Same on Instagram, so JKS dot Adventures, uh, and on. By email, by email is a great way. Our main email is info at Wiminji. That's W E M like mother, I N like Nancy, D J I dash properties dot com. I'll put it in the show notes for people. Yeah. That, <laughs> that one's a little tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. um, very good. And if there's anybody in your uh, in your audience that that's in Montreal, we're actually hosting a really cool uh, workshop. It's the first time ever that. I, I don't think that's ever been done before, but it's the it's a fifty step quick start guide to starting U.S. business to starting a U.S. business. So it's the how to uh, get started in U.S. real estate, and we're going to give people access to our accountant, our our, uh, our attorney, uh, just the step by step. A lot of people are fearful of you know the next step or what to mm-hmm. do. We'll be teaching that in Montreal, and to sign up for that, it's nowfortomorrow.club. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your guy. Yeah, can't talk. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Thank you. Thank right you back guys. at you. Yeah. And-